Hello, guys. How's it going? Uh, welcome to the podcast. I just realized my um, <laughs> I do not have my actual mic. I'm using my earphone mic. So I might have to have Brant intro us for a second as I get that set up. So Brant, how's it going? I'm sorry to put you on the spot on this. I just got to go upstairs and get my wire really quickly. So just give me a second. Guys, welcome to the podcast. Hopefully you're enjoying. Uh, Brant's going to talk about his Kickstarter real quick before we before we jump in to the news. So yeah, go check out his Kickstarter. It's gonna be one second. All that. All right, sounds good. All right, <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, both Kat and I have Kickstarters going on right now. Since uh, we're waiting on her, I'll just kind of briefly mention it and let's see if I can screen share it real quick with you guys. Um, where is it? There it is. Let's try that. There we go. The Last Time We're Hunted, issue one. Urban fantasy mystery comic, Ember Madison, is hunted by a serial killer, harassed by bullies, and nothing is as it seems in this latest installment of The Last Ember Saga. So that is live on Kickstarter for another uh, almost three weeks. Uh, if you guys can go check it out. I'm actually about to add uh, add-ons to the campaign tonight. So uh, there's a little bit of taste of the art. And now Cat is back, so that's perfect timing. Uh, but you guys can check that out at embercomic.com slash hunted. That'll take all right, now I'm back. Hopefully my mic sounds even better because now it's the actual mic and not my earphone. So uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about my Kickstarter and then we're going to get into the news. So let me pull that up right now. Mine is about a high school girl. Father left her to become a full-time superhero. Everyone in the world loves him except for her. And then she inherits his abilities. We have a lot of crazy twists and turns. You support this book for just a dollar. You get 20 indie comics. So just if you like free comics, go get that. Also exclusive for Comic Book Weekly. You are getting The Dancer for free. My other book, Digitally, about a young woman who's a dancer slash assassin. When she was little, she witnessed her parents being murdered in front of her and never dealt with that trauma until now. We'll obviously talk about these Kickstarters as we go along. We are going to talk about Super Sons as well, Tavia. We're going to get in the news. Honestly, we usually talk about the Kickstarters in, in the middle of the of the video, but I needed to get my mic. So sorry about that, but hopefully you guys go support. Um, we do have the ticker tape on the bottom here. So if you guys do support, uh, we will add your name to the bottom. So please let us know throughout the show if you back up the campaign. It's on the top of uh, the chat here. And of course, we are going to talk about um, the big topic of this week, which is is DC TV ending, so that's going to be fun. Uh, but yeah, sadly, I don't know if you guys watched last week or you didn't watch it until the end. Uh, Mike will not be on tonight. Uh, he has a lot of family stuff going on for Thanksgiving. Uh, and we, a lot of you guys, asked us to be on, and me and Brant put together this show just for you guys. Uh, to That way we didn't miss out. So hopefully you're happy with the two of us, okay? <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's <laughs> why, get into... Why wouldn't they be happy with the two of us? Come on. I know, I know. I'm trying to see. Uh, it all. Uh, I was reading a comment about uh, DCTV. But yeah, leave your comments about what you think. But let's get into the comic news first. So first up is that Morbius is getting a one-shot before it's on own, on own ongoing series. So if you... We're excited about Morbius. You're probably the only one. I am not getting <laughs> Morbius. So. No. Me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that one. I don't need the one shot. I I don't need any of it. I was, I was honestly didn't even remember there was uh, a mini or, or ongoing series that was happening. Um, tell you, sorry, no Chris or Michael for the time being. Uh, when they are back for the show, they're still dealing dealing uh, with some personal matters. So when they're back, we'll make an announcement. It's not in the next couple of weeks. So sorry about that. No, um, I, I would I would even mm -hmm. say it's probably not for the rest of the year. Yeah, I I'd probably say that as well. So you know, we don't want to give false hope on that one. Uh, yeah, probably not until the rest yeah. of the year. Honestly, for certain, I would say not for the rest of the year. But we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you for your patience on that one. Uh, but Mike will be back next week. So if you are missing Mike Spider Slayer, he will be back. He's only taking the week off. Uh, we do have yeah. a couple of Hayes here. <laughs> thank you for joining us. There we go. Up, uh, 
let's get into uh let's see annihilation to be revisited in guardians of the galaxy i'm not reading guardians of the galaxy right now yeah i'm not either but annihilation was like my favorite cosmic marvel event ever uh it was so good and uh I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of worried about it because the last time they tried to revisit it, it wasn't nearly as good. Um, so I don't know. It, it just depends on the on the writer, I think. Um, I forget who's writing it. Oh, uh, Al Ewing, I believe, who does Immortal yeah. Hulk. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. Oh, okay. Okay, well, then it could be good. So we'll see. I'll give it a shot. Yeah, we could. We can only hope. Uh, now, going into the next thing, which is that Old Man Avengers gets an audio podcast. This was actually more for Mike because I'm sure he'd be interested. But I don't know if he. I don't know if he'd listen to a podcast with that. I don't know because I know he listens to like videos and stuff when he's you know doing doing his daily routines. So curious if he would have listened to to this because I know he was a big Old Man fan. <laughs> I guess the franchise yeah. of Old Man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if he would or not either, because I know he likes to see the people on screen. I don't know if he's a big podcast guy, but either way, uh, it's interesting because, I mean, both Mike and I really enjoyed uh, Avengers of the Wasteland and uh, Old Man Hawkeye and, and various of those series. So it, it's an interesting direction to take it. I don't know how I feel about it being an audio uh, an audio show either. It's like uh, they... They'd have to really get the voices right for me to get into it, I think. So, Yeah, maybe if uh, it does well enough, they'll make it into a comic. I feel like they did that with the the Wolverine audio mm. stuff they did. I feel like Ben yeah. Percy was who did that before he was even the Wolverine writer. So I guess you never ah. know. Okay. Uh, tell you, Axe, if that's set in the old man uh, Logan universe. Yes, yes, it is. It's. Uh, I think it's uh, Old Man Hawkeye. Uh, one whatever widow it was, I can't remember the name of her. Uh, Wolverine and um, oh, what was the other one? I can't remember. It was in the article, but there was a fourth one. There are so many of them. They've been yeah. coming out almost. They almost when one ends, they they had a new one. So I'm not yeah. surprised because yeah, they had the Wasteland one, which was pretty recently. Mm -hmm. Um. A lot of people talking about the DC TV stuff. Uh, we are going to get to that topic in a bit. Yep. Actually, probably like five, ten minutes, we'll, we'll be getting there. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have that much news this week, so uh, we're sorry about that. But the big media news is big media news, so we're, we're excited about that. Uh, but yeah, next up is the, the web of Spider-Man is pulled off the schedule, so that's based on the Disneyland ride that they were making. I'm guessing they... They pulled it off the schedule because the Disneyland ride's probably going to be delayed because everything's delayed. COVID, money. It's my yeah. guess. Probably. I didn't even know this was a thing, by the way. <laughs> I, I think I think I vaguely remember now that we're talking about it. I think maybe we talked about it on this show at one point. But I don't, I don't remember. even remember if we did. Honestly, I don't remember I don't if it was like the ride we just talked about, like, cool, it's oh, happening. Maybe. Or we actually yeah. talked about this comic. I don't know. Uh, I probably would have tried it out. So I'd just be curious. But mm. I, I'm also not brokenhearted that this has been delayed. Like, it wasn't yeah. like, oh man, I wanted to read this comic so bad. Oh, yeah. That's it's fine. Doomsday clock all over again, right? Oh, yeah. Like, I just want to know what happens in Web of Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Marvel. I mean, there's so many <laughs> other Marvel stuff that's delayed, like that we actually yeah. really, really like, and that's been going on. Uh, Runaways just came back, but who knows when? I think that next issue comes out in like February. So, uh, the, so we just got one. We we get another one in a couple of months. Uh, yeah. I saw Power, you know, Power Pack comes out tomorrow, but then in the recent solicits, the issue four wasn't there. So, mm -hmm. you know, everything's yeah. crazy with scheduling and relaunching stuff. Um, which I don't even, I thought we were going to talk about that. No, I guess I deleted that news piece, but there is something that was shuffled around for Marvel. And um, I will say, I think it's interesting for Marvel comics compared to DC where DC is canceling things. Marvel mm -hmm. at least is, you know, Marvel at least is moving things and waiting. It yeah. doesn't seem like they're canceling things. Right. Yeah. They're just kind of on a waiting pattern. Um, DC, though, DC does that all the time, though. They, they end books and relaunch them. And, I, you know, I think that's more what we're going to see, you know, going forward. I think they're just not showing their cards. 
So we'll see. I could be wrong. Though. Yeah, I think they, they're just trying to figure it all out. I know they had layoffs as well. DC had layoffs. I mean, layoffs is everywhere in the entertainment industry right now. I saw the Sci-Fi Girls um, or whatever it was called, Sci-Fi Fangirls. That just closed, the whole entire site, the whole section. Huh. So huh. things are, you know, definitely rocky. So understandable that it's going to affect everything. Yeah. Uh, but last but not least, we all know Tevia wants to hear this one. Um Tevia will not be getting this book, but I'm glad for the people who like Super <laughs> Sons. It is returning digitally. No word on if, if it's returning physically at all. Hmm. Is it the same creative team? Did it say? I check. Oh. I don't know. I didn't get to look yeah. at that one. Um, let's see. It, yeah, it's Peter J. Tomasi. I don't know if it's the same okay. artist, but it's Max yeah. Rayner, who's the artist. Hmm. Yeah, that's. I don't know. Who the last artist was? To be honest, I know uh, I know Carlo Barberi did some of it, but I don't know who the last one was. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I those digital books tend to f go under the radar for me, and I miss yeah. them and I forget about them. So if they don't they promote do a, them very well, yeah, they really don't. They really don't. So you know, down the line, if they do a a, a physical collection of it, maybe I'll I'll find it. <laughs> We'll and you see. mean like print, like trade yeah, wise? Yeah, yeah. Like that's my worry is that's only going to be, but I mean, not worry because I, again, I'm not picking it up, but for those type of books, like it will only be released in trade. And that's also like, I forget about yeah. trades because I don't follow them as much. That's true. So that's, true. that's yeah. hard as well. Yeah. So I might miss this one. We'll see. <laughs> that's actually a good question. Uh, Black Knight says, how is Super Sons going to work with Superboy being older? Are they going to DH him now? Um, I'm looking at the image that DC has, and they he looks pretty de aged. I, yeah, I would I would wager that it's taking place before he aged up, so it's like you know a flashback kind of thing. I, I you know because right now where the characters are at, Damien has you know quit being Robin and is going off you know the deep end, and Superboy is looking for him and, and, you know, going back and forth between the Legion and that and stuff. I, I just, I can't see them. That wouldn't be as fun. It would be very dark and serious. I think at this stage. Yeah, so. I agree. I mean, I think there's story to tell there, which maybe yeah. for the other super sons, it's just going to be fun and light, but that doesn't mm. mean, it, you know, fun and light's not bad. You sometimes no. when you're reading a lot of dark stuff, you're like, oh, I just want to, I just want a tiny Titans. I just want a super sons to wet my palate before I get into Three Jokers, let's say. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's one reason why I've loved Archie Comics with all these years. You know, because you know the the current stuff, with st notwithstanding, you know, generally lighthearted stuff. So, yeah. Uh, so Tavia says it takes place after Adventures of Super Sun. So okay. okay, so it takes place right after that. Uh, I cool. do miss my Archie comics. A, I didn't really yeah. like the last volume, and B, uh, I think the only thing that's coming out is Sabrina right now. They're they're also figuring out stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That that last one was uh, a little strange. <laughs> yeah, since Nick Spencer took it over, I just it was too Riverdale -y for me. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I don't say it's like dark. It wasn't a dark series. I think a lot of people think like Riverdale is very pulpy in some ways, or um, it just kind of remind me that it was more about the drama. And I was like, and I love well, my Archie drama, but I like more of the, I don't know. I like more of the interpersonal relationships. Riverdale's a CW show. I mean, <laughs> that's all you really got to say about it. It's the CW drama. Oh uh, yeah. But I'm saying for the Archie comic though, I think. Yeah, no, like, I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm true. saying it has to influence. From that. Yeah, similar vibe, yeah. Uh, we do have a couple of comments here. Muhammad says, BTW, Comic Uno, I'm excited because Power Pack has come back tomorrow today. I think it is. I've been waiting for way too long for my for my girl, Julie Power, and for my my Power Pack. So very, very excited, which we'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about what books we're excited for for next week. Yeah. Sweet Exorcist, we're going to actually go right into this. Are we going to discuss the, the Fantastic Starfire costume um, yep. I am not caught up on Titans, but uh, yeah, costume looks great. Uh, I, I'm excited that Starfire is getting some uh, good spotlight. Yeah, I am caught up, and uh, I really enjoyed last season. I cannot wait for more Titans, and that costume looks fantastic, I agree. Um, it's about time she, she got an outfit, 
instead of just running around in street clothes uh, of some sort. So it's I, I love it, and uh, it it I think it's uh it's a good compromise from what you get in the comics, right? It's it's not obviously it's not quite the same. Um, that would be a totally different character, but uh, yeah, it's it's good. It looks good. Uh, I will. I'm curious to see what season. And yes, we are going to talk about Black Lightning as well. Uh, yeah. But actually, that's that's all. I I will bring this up later, Muhammad. But this is a good question. Do you feel that CW should have more shows with diversity once Black Lightning's over? Um, yeah, you know, we can answer that now. We'll we'll get into Black Lightning in a bit. But uh, luckily, we are. It looks like we're going to get the Wonder Girl show, um, which is a Latina um, or, or Latin X character. So that's cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other CW show. Well, Superman's not. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, Bat Batwoman, right? Yeah, Batwoman is now a black queer yeah. uh, character. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so I, I, lo I love that we're getting more diversity, but that kind of goes yeah. to the point of like, come on, CW. You, you bring us the Superman Lois show that we've seen a billion times and you're canceling things like Black Lightning and Supergirl. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... I don't know. It, it's like, uh, it, it's hard because you don't know where they're going with things, right? Because they're ending like the entire Arrowverse, basically. And, and Black Lightning <laughs> just got incorporated into, into all that. And I'm, I'm behind on it, so I don't know what's been happening recently in Black Lightning. But what I did see, I really enjoyed. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a much needed different um, perspective in uh, the DC superhero stuff, right? So it was a uh, more uh, street level, and you know, I guess you get that a little bit narrow. But Arrow kind of went into, um, I don't know, it, it kind of transitioned into all the all uh, Oliver's past catching up with them more so than the street, you know, fighting, uh, you know, typical criminals and stuff. Yeah, like it was very much about the community. It, it yeah. was very much about the characters, which was a lot of fun. Um, right. Uh, sorry, I'm reading a couple of comments. We're definitely going to get to that. Uh, respect Superman. I respect him, but yeah. again, it's it just we've seen these this before and I, you know we hadn't seen a Black Lightning show. We hadn't seen a Supergirl, a Supergirl show, so I think that's what really grinds my gears about it. Um, and also, from what I'm hearing about what we're going to get from the show, there's, like, cheating and, like, there's this love triangle between Lana and Lois. I'm like, I don't want uh, that show. I'm sorry. No. No. And, and that, that um, I, I'm blanking on the actor's name now. The guy from Tyler, Team Tyler Hecklin. Yeah, yeah. His, his version of Superman doesn't seem like he's capable of that. It just, it's weird. It doesn't make sense to me, but... I don't know. Like you said, we've gotten that before. We got, you know, Smallville was fantastic. Lois and Clark was a little bit more tongue in cheek, but it was still fun. And we got two really good Loises with those shows. And then I'm not a fan of this actress as Lois. So me either. Yeah, she's yeah. kind of bland for me. Yeah. Again, yeah. definitely nothing against the 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 show. Or I really like Tyler right. Hecklin as Superman. Yeah. It's just that I wanted more from Supergirl. I wanted more from yeah. Black Lightning. I. I I don't think that this Superman's adding much besides like, okay, they have kids now, which I guess is interesting. I just think there's other characters you could explore in Superman. That's not Superman. Uh, we, yeah. And, and then COVID's obviously a big reason. Um, most likely these shows got canceled. Um, it just sucks that those are the ones that are on the chopping block. The, the ones yeah. that had diversity. Right. Uh, was canceled not because of uh, uh, Sweet says Supergirl was canceled, but not, uh, not because of ratings, but because of combination of COVID and Melissa's pregnancy. Um, yeah, I think you know she's. They're definitely getting to that point. Usually, like six seasons, the time where oh, do you want to renew your contract or not? So that is definitely probably a reason. Um, yeah. We have a lot of questions here, so let me get through them. Um, well, I, this is not Black Lightning related, but what do you think uh, about the Snake Eyes run? I'm not reading it. The the Dead Game one, the Rob Liefeld one. I'm, I'm not guessing. a fan. I I love Snake Eyes. My favorite GI Joe character. I grew up with that character, and uh, I gave it a real hard try. I read the two issues, and I just I do not like the story. Um. It, it's just kind of weird, and I don't, I'm not a fan of the art. So, 
Sorry, you're hearing coughing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, other comments here. Uh, Terry Vaughn says, hey, Kat, love the reviews on comics TV shows. Thank you. I love Riverdale show, and I just seen The Boys. Do you like these shows? I do not like Riverdale. Um, I haven't watched The Boys, but that actually has been on my list. It seems up my alley once I get a chance to watch it. Yeah, Riverdale, I... I liked it at the beginning, and I when they did the biker gang stuff, I, we just kind of fell off of it and never went back. Um, it just kind of got old. And uh, the boys, I I really liked season one. Lisa and I both watched it, and it was like one of those things where it makes you feel uncomfortable, but you can't look away. <laughs> you just got to see it through. And so I, I I haven't started season two yet, but I really want to. So. Yeah, I've heard good stuff about season two as well, so I'm I'm ready to binge it. Why would they just mention Star Girl? I'm probably gonna watch Star Girl first because I haven't only watched the pilot of that one. That, that's all <laughs> I watched too. Yeah, but I liked it. Mike Manhattan asks, "Have you guys seen Animaniacs 2020?" I've not. I've heard actually oh, good haven't. things though. No, yeah. but I heard good stuff. I heard it was fun. Yeah, I and I haven't either. I've seen the trailer, but yeah, it's uh, that's one of Lisa's old favorites. So. I, I'm sure one of us, it, she's going to watch it for sure. Whether uh, I get roped into it or not, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to see if uh, it continues its stride. Um, I saw that there is more. Sorry, guys, just trying to go through. Uh, do you think that uh, COVID has uh, definitely affected how the future of superhero movies are, and series go? Actually, let's answer the bigger question of this show, which is, do we believe DC TV is going to be over and is COVID a reason? I think COVID definitely is not helping network television as a whole. I think network mm -hmm. television is kind of just surviving on the, this, the reality shows that they have, like The Bachelor yeah. and Mass Singer and things like yeah. that. <laughs> um, and maybe their comedy shows. But I, those dramas are not doing well. Uh, they're always no. getting canceled. There's maybe one in a blue moon that does well, like This Is Us or whatever. Uh, but they are not doing well. And I think it's really affecting the CW as well. Uh, and, and that goes into the superhero shows and why we're seeing these cancellations. But then they are replacing them with other shows. But as we've seen with like the Batwoman type shows, that doesn't mean they're going to be good. Mm. And what I'm, again, what I'm hearing about Superman, it, it's, it's a shame, I think. But at the same time, these shows need to end. I just... I think it's too much. I wish they would just focus on like, okay, if Wonder Girl is going to be a show, don't release Superman right in that year as well. Let's let's take some time with these shows. I don't think that we need a new superhero show on the CW every year. Yeah, plus it's like we, we got to live out kind of our, our fantasy with the uh, crisis on Infinite Earths and all these crossovers that we did between the shows. It's it's like a you know lifelong dream for comic fans to see that happen on both the big screen and small screen. We've seen it in both. Uh, from DC and Marvel. And uh, now that that's done, it's like, where do you go from there? Because it's, I, I agree with you. I think you need to pace it out more because you're going to get to that point where people are just like, oh, here's another crossover. Oh, here's another, you know, you know, fill of the week kind of thing. And, you know, and when you're getting like four or five of those shows at once, it, like us, we've, fell like way behind on certain shows it's like we'll pick our favorite we'll see that through and then the others it's like oh, i'll catch up to that after i watch this and this and this <laughs> yeah so i i think it's uh i think the writing was kind of on the wall but i hope it doesn't you know completely kill it i i hope uh we keep something out there for for the comic fans so yeah, I hope we get more. And I think, you know, Tavia mentions HBO Max. I think HBO Max is going to be a place for that. But hopefully there's not absolutely too much there as well. Like, let's take our time. Mm -hmm. Let every show feel different. I think that was a uh, bad choice to have Berlanti do every DC TV show because it yeah. all felt the same. It all felt like the same show. So I'm like, oh, well, why do I need to watch, you know, Stargirl? I have Supergirl. Um, and obviously they're slightly different. But a lot of the formulas. Well, actually, Stargirl, is that a Berlanti show? I think that's. Jeff John's production. But anyways, I was just trying yeah. to make a point of like, oh, why do I have to watch The Flash if I have Arrow, you know? Uh, so I think Berlanti handling all these shows was a lot as well. Uh, yeah. People are talking about Doom Patrol. Um, I've only watched the pilot, but I have heard very good things. I watched half the pilot. <laughs> there you go. I, the uh, the Doom Patrol episode of, Teen, of, of Titans was really good, but I just... I. I don't know. I need to give it another shot. I kind of got bored halfway through the pilot. So, 
Uh, we we got we're getting a lot of questions about some Marvel TV stuff. Excited to mm. see what we're gonna get from them. Uh, no opinion though. We, we don't have it. All right. Uh, let's get into our last topic though, which is the HBO Max is gonna pre uh, premiere Wonder Woman 1984 on Christmas. I thought that was really good um, because we're gonna have to wait a long time until theaters open again. So yeah. um, I'm gonna watch on Christmas Day. I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I I, um, I can't wait for it. I really like the first one, so you know. I, I do have HBO Max, so I'm I'm ready for it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I have HBO Max just because of HBO, so I think that's also a good I, deal. Yeah, we have a we have it through YouTube TV, which is what we use for our cable now. Um, and it was I forget it was like some kind of special going on, so we just ended up somehow getting it. We got it like it's integrated with. Uh, I think it might be integrated with Hulu and YouTube TV somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Lisa you said have it up. HBO Max. You have HBO Max. That's what's important. Yes, that's the important part. And I got I fell down a rabbit hole, and I apologize. Uh, not you know, definitely a good rabbit hole because we, yeah. you know, getting TV and and how we get our TV is important. And uh, there's a lot of streaming services and what we're gonna get. I'm sorry, there's so much background noise. I hope you're not hearing it. I appreciate it. Okay, <laughs> I'm in the middle of a show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> getting into, uh, I think, our Kickstarters, I guess, because that was all the news, unless we had more to say about HBO Max. I I don't think so. I mean, it's like they're, they're slowly rolling out content. I did, Have you watched any of their content yet? I watched Flight I Attendant last night. Was it good? It was weird. <laughs> it was so really not weird. good. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't bad. It was just it was strange. It's Berlanti, which I did not realize. Um, it's it's so strange though. Like she, it's, it's Kaylee Cuoco, okay. right? Okay. No, she. Yeah. I mean, she like wakes up in a hotel room when the guy beside her is dead, and then she's trying to go through her day, and she keeps flashing back. Like she's like somehow she ends up back in the room, and she's watching herself. And I don't know if it's like in her head or if it's she's somehow transporting or if it's their supernatural element. I don't know what's going on. So it's just strange. So yeah, it doesn't it, it it doesn't sound like it actually sounds like a network show. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which it, is strange really. to say. Uh, but Kaylee's doing great on on um, Harley Quinn. And I will say I've recommended Harley Quinn to a couple of people, and and just like off like off hey you should watch harley quinn and like three people have come back to me and say i've watched harley quinn thank you <laughs> so watch <laughs> harley quinn guys because it's really good and these are people that like don't read comics and they yeah. really enjoyed it so cool uh we have a couple more things here uh well one was oh sorry you guys should do a live show of one woman on youtube that'd be fantastic we don't do those anymore uh you know me and brant we got too much going on. We got too much. Yeah. This show is enough for us. So also it's on Christmas. So I'm going to yeah. be, you know, taking my time and not be working. Uh, right. I want to enjoy that movie without, unless there's like a topic where I'm like, oh, I should do like a little video on my channel where, cause like, I really want to talk about this topic. Um, I, all of us here have been better at using our time. I, I know that sounds bad to say, but like we, I think we all spread ourselves a little bit too thin. So doing things like that spread us a little bit too thin. Yeah, yeah. We we did our fair share of that kind of content years ago, though. So it's just, yeah, we. It's not our thing anymore. That's okay. <laughs> that is. It's okay. Uh, it doesn't mean we won't talk about the movie at all. And on a show like Absolutely. this, like, I'm yeah. sure we'll all right. end up watching it and be like, Hey, let's like do a little segment and talk about wonder woman. I'm sure that will happen. Uh, but doing yeah. a live watch, honestly, I don't even personally like doing live watches. I don't understand what's happening half the time. I feel like I have to fill up <laughs> air. It just like, they're not fun to me. I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. The, the first, the very first one we ever did, uh, not on this channel, but on our previous channel, um, I think it was frozen, right? I actually like that I think was it was on one? this channel. I thought it was this channel. Was it on this channel? Okay. Well, either way, uh, whenever we did it, wherever we did it, I, we did Frozen. I um, 
I watched it before we went live. We weren't supposed to. <laughs> I watched it before we went live, so I wouldn't be missing stuff because I knew well, I would not Frozen. be able to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit. And honestly, like, I did this. We watched Ghostbusters that way. I think a big reason I yeah. did not like Ghostbusters because, like, I'm watching it while I'm talking. It's like, there's a reason yeah. you don't watch TV or movies while you're talking, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. It's a little bit harder. Uh, yeah, and they're just, they're not fun. They're just not fun. No, I, I remember when uh, Chris and I did Iron Fist, and I, yeah. <laughs> I had to keep, Chris would just get lost, and he's like, staring at Iron Fist. I'm like, Chris, Chris, we got to talk. We're live. We uh, talk. Come on. Fun times. Oh, yeah. Again, you experiment, you do things. I, I think we found our groove of what type of content we like putting online these days. I think that's mm. for all three of, you know, I was, yeah, all three of us. I know Mike's not here, but um, yeah. I think we we know what we like. And uh, yeah, you got you got to you got to post stuff you enjoy. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can't just post because other, like you think, oh, everyone's going to watch this. Do it. Like if you don't like it, then it's not going to come out good. Exactly. No, I completely agree. Let's see. There's stuff about Wonder Girl. This was asked a couple of times. So maybe with Wonder Girl CW, perhaps CW might be looking at DC future state as targets for future shows, perhaps. I don't think they're going to have more than one, though. I don't know. Maybe. But I only see the Wonder Girl happening as a TV show. I think maybe more ongoing yeah. will happen. Maybe more spinoff comics. But I don't know about more shows. Yeah, I think if something really took off or they saw some kind of potential in some character, then maybe uh, there'd be something down the line. But, you know, it's not going to be anytime soon because that stuff takes, you know, production takes a while. So even if something like sparks some kind of idea next year, we're not going to see it for a couple of years. Exactly. Least. Yeah. Uh, we also have a, qu a question from Muhammad. What are your thoughts on Outlawed events so far? Are we a quarter of the way into the comics? Uh, on day, are we? <laughs> it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it just started. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't liked it that much, honestly. If I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I, I really yeah. don't like what it's doing for most of the characters. I really just want to read Power Pack. Like that's the only reason I'm interested. It's yeah. It's it's like it's Civil War light. I mean, that's really all it is. It's you know, I I don't know. It's okay. It's not bad, but you know. Hopefully it'll hopefully it'll end strong. Hopefully. I don't I don't have much <laughs> much hope. I'm on trying that. to be positive, Kat. <laughs> I'm trying to be positive. Uh yeah, that that's all the, the news. So we're gonna we're gonna chat about our Kickstarters and then we're gonna get into comics. Uh we'll probably have an I mean, I don't know how long we're gonna be talking about comics just because it's just the two of us. So if you guys have more questions, we'd love to answer questions in between. Uh comic kickstarter stuff would be fun as well because you got both of us here and we're not we're not boring mike or chris or michael about anything it's just us we could talk about kickstarter all you want <laughs> so uh yeah let's let's get into it uh brant you want to talk about yours sure yeah i'm, I'm actually taking my add-ons live <laughs> as i'm doing this because i i didn't get them done in time for the campaign but anyway uh the last ember is um it's, it's our flagship character. It's a, a teenage girl who um, gets imbued with these abilities uh, to, con to create and control fire. And she learns later on that she is the last fire goddess, last of her kind. And in this arc, uh, there is a serial killer hunting down powered beings like her. And he is on his way to where she is. And that's not good for her because, you know, obviously a serial killer is coming after you. And that's not good. But uh, meanwhile, she's dealing with school bullies and, and trying to, you know, deal with some family drama. Her brother discovers her abilities. All kinds of stuff is blown up all around her and nothing is as it seems. And by the end of this arc, everything's going to change. So uh, lots going on. Got a brand new creative team. Federico Sabatini and Andrea Celestini have turned in some gorgeous pages. Um, I cannot wait to show more. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's mine in a nutshell. Please go check it out. Embercomic.com slash hunted is where you can find it. Yeah, um, I do want to answer this question. Zombie Dan says, speaking of Kickstarter, it looks like Paposi's almost ready to ship out Oz. Can't wait for it. Very excited for Oz. Um, yeah. Also, if you like Oz, uh, well, first of all, I've known David for about four years. He was my editor over at Newsarama, uh, and he was kind enough to give Spencer and Locke issue one 
for free for anyone who backs this. So nice. you like Oz, you, you like David, go back up the project for a dollar. Uh, but yeah, like father, like daughter, which I actually just saw, we got two more backers uh, during this time. So thank you, whoever backed. Uh, it's about a high school girl. Father left her to become a full-time superhero. Everyone in the world loves him, except for her. And then she inherits his abilities. So uh, yeah, definitely go check out the the Kickstarter again for as low as a dollar. You're getting 20 books, which is crazy. Uh, we are very close to unlocking a trade. I'm going to scroll down to that. So we're going to unlock Tart the trade in 10 backers. So every backer helps. And we have 14 days left. So I hope you guys could back it up. And if you back up me... Yeah. Brand and Will crossover division, you get this beautiful crossover print signed by all three of us, which is crazy. We're all yeah, signing. yeah. It's gonna be signed, and we may even number them. It's gonna be cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, you just gotta back all three at any level, um, and you'll get it, it. Whether you you know, it, depending on whether you're digital or physical backer, you'll get it digitally or physically. But yeah, no. Nah. So we maybe we could like sign it digitally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, we I actually have, it. I have my digital signature saved as a PNG file. Well, there we <laughs> go. Maybe we could do yeah. that and we'll yeah. sign it. There we go. We'll sign it digitally and we'll sign it physically as well. If you guys back it up at any level, that means if you give a dollar to each campaign, you'll get this either digitally signed, you can print it out, or physically, it's going to look a bit more professional. So, And you get the yeah. physical actual sign you know our signatures if you get it physically uh but yeah, yeah I, I hope you guys could go support we only have honestly a few days left um yeah so and also if you guys support we have the ticker tape on the bottom we'll, we'll put your name so please let us know if you backed if you already see your name you don't have to let us know because we have it there but if you you back during especially during this but we'd love to feature your name uh during the show yeah and if you like the art in that crossover print that is the art that is in the last ember so Go check that out as well. Um, I was going to say something else, and I, it, I totally lost it. Anyway, what um, I, say? yeah, the last number um, we're close to two to actually hitting two milestones, uh, which will be releasing a couple of cool things: a digital book and a print uh, that will go to everybody. So we, we're, I think we're nine backers away. Yeah, nine backers away from one of them, and we're like fifty-eight dollars away from the other. So very close to two milestones. So please back it up. Uh, yeah. All right, we, we got some questions here, so we're going to go through cool. those. Um, Tevi asks, I guess for both of us, uh, would your characters ever time travel? You don't want to spoil stories. I'll say it's like, <laughs> it's, I, I guess it's like possible, like in my universe to do so. I Yeah, I mean, I'm dealing with, myth, myth, yeah, if I can speak, mythological beings, so I'm sure time travel is possible in my world as well. Um, I will say that there are definitely flashbacks backs to other time periods in mind so so there you go that kind of time travel in that way uh we yeah. do have some more questions uh so from what i see both your kickstarter comics are connected right not 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 story wise so just in that right. print they are yeah so but, i guess that answer is that yeah we have we have been asked and we have talked about possibly in the future doing some kind of uh, special one-off crossover thing for sure um, Love if you guys to want to it. see that, yeah. If you guys want to see that, let us know. Yeah, we hopefully in in the next year or so. Of course, everything takes time to plan, but we'd love to do it, especially if you guys would like to see it um, and yeah. us figuring out a story. But we're we're going to chat about it. That'll be a lot of fun. I, I'd yeah, love to do sure. that. Um, another question, Muhammad says, perhaps if the Kickstarters are successful, may you'll do a massive universe on your own as well. I mean, it'd be cool to do spinoff books, but I, I think, at least for me, I, I like just to release more series. Like, like Fall Like Daughter, I think it doesn't need a spinoff to other books. I think it has enough story in, in, in its own book. But you never know. I, I love to do short stories, maybe. Uh, you, do, you never know. I, I say never say never. With, with The Last Ember, I always actually envisioned it as, as a universe. I call it the Emberverse. Um, so we'll see. It just depends. You know, it depends on where the, the series goes and how some certain things that play out <laughs> on, on the on the outside of things. So we'll see. Let's see. Uh, well, good luck with your books, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we, thank you. We really appreciate that. And then Serenity says, I'm a 
big into group watches. Maybe if I had friends in the area I could hang with, I wouldn't be into it. But internet is my only human interaction. Yeah, totally get it. And um, I think a good way to do group watches, but again, not like on camera and for other people, uh, there's a Netflix party. Uh, I've done it with, you know, obviously mm. with COVID, um, with friends, it's nice to hang out with them and, and chat. So we, we do like a Netflix party. So you don't have to talk, but you guys could like text in a way. Oh, like there's a chat cool. and you could, you could talk during the movie that way. I feel like that's yeah. the easiest way to do it. Again, See I don't. I don't think I would want to record myself doing that, but it's fun if you yeah. can't see your friends. My problem is I'm a very, like, I, I get upset when people talk during movies and stuff like that. I'm one of those kind of people. So I just want to, like, totally ingrain myself into what I'm watching and just, you know, absorb it. Um, the things that I like to group watch, though, are, like, like sporting stuff, like wrestling and MMA and stuff like that. I think that's cool to watch together. Yeah, and you don't have to, like, pay attention as much to them right yeah exactly fighting. Yeah. yeah i know like that's not a that's not a negative towards the towards no wrestling, not at all just, yeah just the type of medium it is right we also have zombie x dance so seeing if everything goes well obviously do you guys plan to make your series run last a good while like reach a high number yeah 100 percent uh like finally daughter sorry up to issue seven uh and it's an ongoing book i would love for it to you know, last as long as we can, and hopefully the the backers are there. Yeah, for, which for they've been for this campaign. No, I'll say that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, for me, I, that was like my original vision, but then I kind of shifted, and I'm I'm doing like a series of mini series. So like this current one is four issues, and then you know I'll go on to the next one. Um, who knows if it's really successful? Maybe I'll just like do you know, <laughs> do do a Marvel and like renumber it. Oh, I hit issue fifty. You know. <laughs> But Marvel does it for a reason. It is a yeah. good strategy. I will say, I guess I can say it here. Um, there, I've talked about how issue eight is such a big moment for like father, like daughter, and me and my friend Phil. We've not that he writes the book with me, but you know he's he's the guy I go to when I need to talk about these things. Uh, he's like, oh, maybe you should renumber it after that. But that's like a hard thing because Kickstarter. Oh what's been like popular like what's been a talking point about this book and what people i guess quote unquote been impressed with it is that it's been on kickstarter for so long and that it's an actual serialized book because most kickstarters they do like one issue and they stop or um it's a mini series or it's a graphic novel so like people in the direct market it's not good to have a lot of I issues as we've seen with marvel and dc but in kickstarter it's like it actually is a good thing because you're showing people that you've done a lot so it's like yeah. the complete opposite in that market. So, but at the same time, like Father Like Daughter, again, changes a lot in issue after issue eight. So it's very plausible that you can renumber it. So it's, you know, something that's dancing in my head. It would be the yeah. same story, but you could right. renumber it. It's it's funny because there's a, a friend of mine, Bill Clone, he does a podcast called Under the Mask, and he has a series called Kinetic. And I, I think it was it was either issue eight or issue nine of his series. Um, he, or it might've been issue 10, eight, nine or 10, somewhere around there. He decided to renumber his, and now he, he released his last Kickstarter was kinetic identities issue one, which is actually like issue nine or 10. So he, he kind of did that same better? thing. Yeah. Did it do better you feel, or did it do? Um, I think he had a pretty successful campaign. I actually just got the, I got the haul in the mail today. That was kind of, um, let me see how well it did. I, I remember it doing well. I actually designed the Kickstarter page for that one. That's why it's oh, nice. Uh, of course, now I can't find it. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he, he did a Kickstarter and now he's got it on uh, um, Indiegogo, kind of like their on demand thing. Yeah, I've definitely seen that before. I, I've seen people have success with it and some haven't. <laughs> um, but uh, kudos. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he had a, he had like 120 backers and modest success. I don't know what his last one, what his previous ones did though. So, like, let me see. I don't want to like put all his numbers out there on the. <laughs> uh, I don't know that he kickstarted all of them either. I think he might have self funded all. Oh, he did the the trade before that. He did the okay. Trade for, and uh, trades are so different for sales, but yeah, it's just interesting to look at that. We do have a couple more comments here. It all comes down to what the writers think, how long it should be, but. For me, minis hardly do it. 
Yeah, it depends on the series. Like I have the dancers, a mini series. I, you know, as a reporter, I always ask for mini series. I'm like, oh, if you had the chance, would you want to do more? And most of the time, people say, yeah, they're like, I would love to do more, you know, blah blah. blah. But for the dancer, I always say like, no, I don't want to do more, <laughs> uh, just because yeah. it's, you know, I think it dilutes the story as well sometimes. Right. Yeah. For the, for the last Ember, I definitely plan on going forward with it past this one. The the main reason I repackaged it as a as a new number one and a new like mini series is because i got a new creative team and uh it just kind of it took the book in a completely different direction artistically and which you know kind of made me think um think of ways to take it story-wise as well uh based on how the art was was playing out and it kind of gave it a different vibe so i definitely wanted to uh you know kind of give it a fresh start with that so, you know, we'll see how, how successful this uh, arc is and go from there, whether I go with issue five after that or if I go to a new miniseries. So. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. Again, Kickstarter yeah. is something which we actually have a really cool question, which I see James's comment. But I'm going to go back to you, James, in a second, because uh, JDA, uh, JDA3 says, I have a dumb question. What is a Kickstarter? So not a dumb question. I think it's a no. relatively new platform um so kickstarter is a crowdsourcing crowdsourcing platform we're seeing a lot more creators use it scott snyder boom studios just used it this year uh and it's a very good avenue for indie creators to fund their books which is what we do we've uh we've been doing it for a really long time and currently we do have uh, and i'll post again but we do have our kickstarters live and it helps literally fund the book if you guys back it up. So it's, it's really good and important if you guys back it up. Uh, and also it's just good to have the the, the higher numbers on Kickstarter because you get other companies to recognize you. You get other creators to recognize you. So it's just a platform for funding. Yeah. And and it's also, I always view it kind of as a pre-order, pre-order kind of thing. Even though Kickstarter is not a store, they're very clear with that. But uh, you're, you're pre-ordering it, pre-ordering it from the creators. Um, so you're, you're not just throwing money at something. You actually get the product when you, uh, when you support it. So you're definitely getting something for your money. Um, and I, I think that's the beauty of the platform. The comics category on Kickstarter has grown so much this year. We talked about that, you know, in other places, uh, 22 million, 22.2 million or something like that this year, uh, on, on Kickstarter, just in comics, um, has been raised and like you said scott snyder there's an alan moore comic on there uh at yeah. um so many creators are are nav uh, na navigating uh, <laughs> that's not the right word but uh so many creators are, are going over to that platform yeah yeah so it's not just for indie creators it really is for everybody it's just a it's like posting yeah. your books on webtoons it's just another it's it's just another avenue besides diamond in the direct market to get your books into people's hands and it's it's not the only avenue you could use. Like you use Kickstarter and then go into direct market, which we're seeing with Scott Snyder. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's really cool platform. Hopefully you guys could go check it out. And again, it's so helpful if you guys check it out. Uh, we do have a question or comment from James. Uh, I'll be getting Brant's book this Thursday that covers sick. Anyway, I could get that signed like cats. Uh, so that's for you, Brant. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I was, uh, Toying with doing book plates again, which is just like a little insert that I sign instead of the actual book. But if you'd like the book signed, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Um, That's awesome, get, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the Under the Radar books. And definitely, if you have more Kickstarter questions, like we said, we'll probably could answer some in the end of the show as well. So we'll do like a slight Q&A um, then. So cool. under the radar, uh, my under the radar this week was one of the bigger talking points books, which is Fantastic Four issue 26. Um, I like this issue. I enjoyed seeing bits of it. I, I liked, uh, so we'll talk about the Franklin stuff. So Franklin yes. in this issue was revealed <sighs> not to be a mutant and Brant uh, is not happy about it. For me, I was neutral on it. Like I don't, I think it's an interesting thing to explore. Like I like, I kind of like the angst of Franklin and him trying to find himself. I don't know if him not being a mutant needed to be in this story at all to do that same exact story. Uh, but I like Val. Um, I enjoyed seeing the future foundation again and the power pack have literal cameos. They don't talk, but they're in it. Uh, or at least Julie and uh, um, Alex are in it. Uh, but yeah, it, it 
it wasn't my favorite issue, but I, I think it's an important issue to read because a lot happens, which is why it's in my under the radar. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot that, that happened for sure. And it, it wasn't, I mean, it was a solid issue. I agree. I just, I was not happy with the way Franklin was was handled. I, I generally don't like big retcons like that when they completely change the history of a character you're, you're, you're familiar with uh, anyway. And just kind of like taking his whole, uh, you know, identity, basically. You know, Franklin's always been the mutant in the family, right? And uh, th- all of a sudden, it's like, no, you were never a mutant, dude. You just kind of tricked yourself into thinking you were <laughs> because of your powers. <laughs> and it's like, what? No, come on. They could have done something better with that, I think. And, and I agree with you. The trying to find his place in the world is interesting. It's an interesting thread, but I, I felt like. Um, like I told you privately, that being of both worlds was a more interesting way to attack that story. So. Yeah, and we saw that in that mini. I don't even know if it yeah. ever finished. Did it? That Fantastic <laughs> Four. Did that ever yeah. finish? It did. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think don't so. remember what happened in the end. I don't I think the last. It, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't think the last issue was that strong uh, in comparison to the rest of the series. It was like four issues, right? Three or three or so. four issues. Yeah. So let's get into your under the radar grant. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> juggernaut number three, because I, <laughs> I didn't have anything else uh, that would fit the, uh, fit the bill. The rest of mine were in our big books discussions, but um, it was an okay issue. I, I, I hate that, I, that it's a book that I'm kind of in the middle on that's in my under the radar, but I, there is a lot to enjoy about it. I love the dynamic between um Oh, I cannot remember her name. There's a, a teenage girl character that um, she keeps saying, I'm not a mutant, but they think she is a mutant. That Her genes show that she's a mutant, but she's fighting that and saying that she got her power some other way. Anyway, she's formed this relationship with, with Juggernaut. And they, it's kind of this buddy thing. And, and it's interesting. And Juggernaut's trying to own up to all his, all the chaos he's caused through the years, all the damage and all this stuff. But it, it's staying too long in that um, part where um, it's it's all about damage control, that company, and how the superheroes are tearing up the city. It's been like kind of banging that into our heads for three issues now, so I'm a little tired of that. But I do like the dynamic between Jernot and this girl, and if they can build on that going forward, um, it can be a fun series. We have a question from BJ. Uh, what's the difference between reading a novel and reading comics? Uh, I would say reading a novel is more about your imagination, right? Because you're seeing yeah. words are helping you see the picture in your head. And then comics, the, the pictures are there. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like, so you, you have movies where you have your entire visual experience and you're taking everything in you know, that way. And then you have novels where you're taking everything in with all your, you know, like you said, your, your imagination and all those senses and, and trying to fill in the blanks. And then you have comics, which is kind of the perfect marriage of the two where you're still reading all that content and kind of you know, deciphering it in the way that, you know, you can understand it. And at the same time, you're having these, this beautiful art that's married with it. So you can kind of see different perspectives of what you would see in your head. So, that's kind of cool. Yeah, That's, it's it's interesting. It's probably much better explanations than I just gave. Yeah, but I, I don't think either of us gave the best explanation, but that's our Webster Dictionary definition <laughs> of it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get into some big books now. So the first King in Black book came out this week. Uh, not as connected into King in Black, I don't think, but Symbiote Spider-Man issue one. That's been kind of a saga with peter david's symbiote books so what did you think bram i enjoyed the uatu stuff i it was interesting seeing the watcher and and kang and their whole ordeal the rest of the book i didn't really it it was just like okay it's another symbiote spider-man story that's fine that's fine uh but yeah it was i'm I'm sure the the kang and uatu stuff is going to play into the whole king of black somehow some way so that's what I find interesting about it. And I've always been a fan of the Watcher from the What If stuff. And 
Uh, I'm glad he's back. So, yeah, it was, it was okay. It was decent. I don't know that it sold me on the event yet. but Yeah, I, I'm going to read that first issue and see if it, if it sells me on the event at all. Uh, let's get into our other big book this week, which is Stillwater Issue 3. Um, still continuously enjoying this book. This issue kind of deals with more of how does our main character uh, get into this town and try to be a part of it while kind of being a mole and wanting to, to dismantle it as his mom is buried in the ground. It's a little bit of a slower issue for me, but I thought it was a necessary slow issue. Yeah, I, um, I, I like the way that, you know, he had to learn the hard way that he had to kind of, you know, kind of kind of slow down and, and, and do exactly what you said, kind of fit in and spy on them from the inside and kind of figure out how to get out of this town eventually, hopefully, um, and get back to his life. But, uh, yeah, it was a little bit slower, but, I, yeah, I, I, I don't – I lost my whole train of thought. I was thinking about something else, and it just left me. I will but, say, guys, like we're we're trying to do a show for only two people as we go through the comments and all the other stuff. So yeah. sorry that we're also like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we want this show a little bit more than we usually are. But <laughs> yeah, it, no, it's it's all good. But I, the one problem I had with this issue was I didn't feel like the uh, is it the sheriff the the woman is she the sheriff? Yeah, she's a sheriff. Yeah. I think. She felt a little bit different than she did in the previous two issues. Like I, I almost she was almost likable in a way. Like she just kind of went along with the town because that's the way the town was. But this issue, she seemed more like she was like the rest of the town. You know what I mean? She was a little bit more cruel. Mm-hmm. And I just I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't like that abrupt change. But I, there was a lot to still like in this issue, even though it was slower. I liked the conversation on the rooftop, which made my panels. Uh, that was that was <laughs> great. Was just, I love that. You yeah, right. That that stuff probably happens all the time too. It's like you take me off. Well, you're dead because you know it. Just like the sheriff shot the shot the deputy uh, was the last issue. That and, and it, also the mother being buried alive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like. And nothing is off limits here because they they come back and it's like they don't care about how much pain they cause you in the process. It's just like you take me off, you you're gonna die for a day or two, you know. <laughs> what the heck? It's a crazy book. It's good, yeah. No, it's a it's a good book. Uh, so that's that's our big book for um, our indie. Now going into our DC big book that is Batman issue one oh three. Um, which I, I particularly haven't been loving this arc with Ghostmaker, but I, I continue to love Harley, and I liked her little conversation with not Poison Ivy and her kissing a Poison Ivy plant because she just misses her girl. Uh, that was pretty interesting. But yeah, this is yeah. a little slow of an arc for me. Yeah, rashes in places you wouldn't believe. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, yeah. I mean, she loves <laughs> Pamela. She loves Pam. Yeah. She'll, kiss that, she'll kiss that plant. <laughs> yeah, that... Yeah, that that conversation was fun. I'm not like really feeling the ghost maker dude either. I I don't know. I it was it's not bad. You know, we definitely read worse Batman stories. Okay. But I'm I'm kind of ready to move past this. And I I do like that we are getting a little bit more of Clown Hunter. Is that his name, Clown Hunter? I was yeah. get it. Yeah, okay. I was calling him Clown Killer at one point, but yeah, Clown Hunter. Uh I actually you know, fits the bill a bit better than Clown Hunter. Yeah, it does. It does. Because, I, I, you know, I, I thought we were going to have to wait for, you know, his story. and But we're getting little pieces of it here and there with, with him. And I the one thing I did like about this issue was uh, Ghostmaker was, like, calling Batman on all the stuff that he missed in Gotham. And then towards the end, Batman's like, this is why I didn't do, you know, address that situation. This is why I didn't do, address that one. You know, it's like Batman was on top of it all. He was just handling it a lot smarter, which was pretty cool. I, I like the way that was uh, played out. Uh, we we do have a, a, a big question here. Uh, I think uh, driven by philosophy. Now, uh, what's your motivation to read a comic? Uh, I hmm. like it. I don't know. Like, I don't know if I have a bigger <laughs> answer than that. Just like enjoy like, reading them. Yeah, like like from the beginning, or like you know, like at the beginning of time, like when we first started reading comics, or like just yeah. any comic in general. 
I, um, I, I would maybe the beginning is an interesting question. I don't know. For me, I, yeah. I just enjoyed the philosophy of it. I don't know. I, again, I was like what five or six when I was reading it. I don't, I don't think I yeah. had any thoughts of it. I was just, I just enjoy superheroes. Yeah, I mean, if if we can do a little personal psychoanalyzation here, uh, my you know that's what we're just, here for. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's what, that's what, <laughs> that's what we're here for. I'm actually um, your therapist. Yeah, just uh, kind of riffing off of uh, past experiences in my life. Like my parents got divorced when I was four, and I didn't talk for a year. And so I discovered comics soon after that. And uh, I just kind of, it, it was my way of escaping things. And I just kind of immersed myself in them and never stopped. The same thing with wrestling. Both of those things I just kind of, which are similar in certain ways. Uh, yeah, I just kind of immersed myself in those. And that was like my, my beginning with them. And that's, there's probably some, you know, some deep stuff behind it if I really looked for it. I think for all of us, there's some deep stuff for sure that goes into why we like heroes and, and the stuff we enjoy for comics. Um, I definitely... I don't know. I, I, I just enjoyed like the, I always enjoyed double life stuff. Like I enjoy like yeah. a good secret. So I think that's what like got me into like the superhero secret identity stuff. Like I, I enjoy what mass you put up, like what front you put up to the public and, mm -hmm. and what you keep for yourself. I'm always been very fascinated by that. And like to this day, I'm still very fascinated from like a social media standpoint, a interpersonal standpoint. Um, I think that's what draws me to comics, I would say. Just yeah. that layers. Yeah, yeah. That and also, like, I, I'm a sucker for um, unassuming heroes. And it's the kind kind of characters I write as well. Um, and that's, you know, why Spider-Man is my favorite. It's those characters you wouldn't think would be anything special. And they're the ones that become the most special. And not because they desire it, just because they feel that responsibility and they step up when others wouldn't um and that's something that always appealed to me as well and it's, it's like that's who i wanted to be i wanted to be that kind of person so yeah i don't know if that was the answer you're looking for bj but <laughs> it's an answer, the answer yeah. We got. yeah that's the deep answer we both had uh i yeah. think brant did a lot better on the deep answer than me but uh yeah that's why we like comics Speaking of, uh, we're going to go into our number five uh, comic book of, of the week. For me, it was Teen Titans issue 47, which is the last issue of this series. Um, I thought it was a good send off. I enjoyed the character drama, I guess we'd say. But I, honestly, I guess the lack of drama. I enjoyed uh, that Red uh, red Arrow and, and um, Kid Flash got together. And I, I enjoyed that moment. I, I love Crush and Roundhouse's friendship. And there's definitely a good open ending, open ended ending, I guess, uh, <laughs> where we get to see the the Titans Tower that they're going to join them, which makes sense yeah. if we ever get another series to have them all together, kind of like the Titans TV show, different yeah. or even Jeff Johns Teen Titans. So, and we also have Endless Winter coming up with them. So I enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it was a good issue. I, I really enjoyed this issue, and uh, I, I love that they're joining the rest of the Titans. It, it seems fitting, especially without. You know they're de facto leader, and so they they get themselves another Robin basically. <laughs> so that's you know in Nightwing, um, I, and it it's like when uh, when Damian left and we learned the series was canceled, you know being canceled is like oh man, I love this team. I want to see them do something. I want to see them continue on. So it was uh you know rewarding for me that they do can get to continue on somewhere some sometime soon. So. Yeah, for sure. I'll probably just read Endless Winter for that sake. I want to see yeah, what happens yeah. with Teen Titans, even if I just end up reading the Teen Titans issue. But I think I'll end up at least reading issue one for that. Yeah. All right, let's get into uh, your number five. My number five is uh, actually Cable, issue six. Yeah, part of uh, Ten of Swords, X of Swords, whatever you want to say it. Um, I, I, there was a lot to... to like about this issue i like uh I, we got to see kitty finally which we haven't seen her in a while so uh, i know she but she's see she seems bored uh she's doing that uh, night yeah, trick she's totally with bored. Your head. she's mm -hmm. very bored 
Yeah, I mean, well, she's not in the you know in the battle. She's just sitting there in the quiet council, right? It's like what the, <laughs> um, <laughs> more sinister but, though. That that comment that he that uh, that Kitty has horrible fashion. True, and even Emma couldn't protect Kitty. Oh like, yeah, 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 Kitty, you suck. Well. It, it's obvious she does have terrible fashion, but you know she does. Um, now she's got a pirate yeah. coat, so it's okay. I was gonna say even her current fashion's not great. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what to do with Kitty. Poor Kitty. Um, yeah, but no, there, there was some solid stuff in here, and you you continue the the the, uh, the little um, kind of side thing with Cable and Apocalypse, and there was something else big that happened in the issue, and I cannot remember what it was now. But anyway. uh, I mean, uh, yeah, the apocalypse I, ending. What yeah, the apocalypse ending. You know, that was that was predictable. But there was something else. The sword that fight. There was a big sword fight. There was a lot where, of swords. where Cable almost died. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? What else happened in this? I mean, I really like this issue. This is probably. My I, I did too, and I looked before. through it right before the show, and I, I don't remember what it was. Now I looked through all Cable. three X books. That they're all jumbling together. That's the issue. I was reviewing this for my show and I was talking about what happened in, I was trying to talk about X-Force. I ended up talking about Cable instead because it's just all, everything that happens in these books jumbled together for (laughs) sure. Uh, It's very fun in that way. But yeah, I like Cable. There was some good emotional resonance, but also piggybacked off what was going in Exoswords pretty well. So I thought it was pretty, pretty good. Um, Did Brant freeze? He might have. I hear him, I think. I'll ax him. You freeze. Let's see. Uh, as we wait for Brant, we'll get into the next big book. But yeah, I enjoyed Cable. Just saying, I, I really enjoyed the artwork for that book as well. Uh, thought, it was, thought it was good. I've been enjoying the art for that. I'm going to message him on Facebook too. Give me a second, guys. Did you... Freeze. Oh no, hopefully his internet didn't go out. All right, let's get into the the next set of big books here, which uh, Brant didn't even read this one, so we're good, uh, which is Widowmaker. <laughs> we completely lost Brant. Uh, next is Widowmaker, issue one. I got this on whim because... I didn't have a lot of books and I, I wanted to get some big books. So Widowmaker, it wasn't very new reader friendly, I would say. I don't, I don't know much about Black Widow's supporting cast members. So this didn't help me very much and felt very by the numbers to me. Uh, the artwork was even kind of plain. I thought this was a mini series. It's just a one shot. So it's not like I could drop it, but it, it was a very okay book. Didn't didn't do much for me on that one. So that that was Widowmakers. I don't recommend it. I'm gonna keep my Facebook up. Brant has not messaged me yet, so he's restarting his internet. The big books he was gonna talk about, I didn't read. So he was gonna talk about Commanders in Crisis issue two and Nightwing Commanders in Crisis. I didn't really quite like the first issue, so I didn't read that. Nightwing. As I say, I had, didn't have many books this week. I, I was just like, oh, it was a fine issue, issue 75, but not enough. Like, oh, my God, I need the next issue. So I'll wait until an arc is like, oh, man, that looks really cool. I'm going to go pick that up. So I didn't read Nightwing this week. Sorry about that, guys. Didn't read it. Yeah, internet's out. We'll see how that goes. So I'll talk about the rest of the books if, if Brent doesn't come back on. That way you guys know our top five. So next up for me, number four, which is, let's see. Oh, Brent came back on. There we go. Am I here? Yeah, you're here. I was like, in my mind, I was like, shit. Myself hard enough. I'm sorry. Uh, I was like, I was messaging Lisa. I was like, internet's out, and she's like, it's working down here. I'm like, crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, not crap, thank God, because I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yeah. I was panicking in my mind. But <laughs> I was panicking okay now. trying to remember cable. <laughs> like, we're why did I pick really this? Panicky. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, why is this my number five? Did I even read yeah. this book? Um, guys, we're no. having a good show. We're oh, really so trying. Good. We're doing we're doing this really well. Uh, oh. we do have a question from Black Knight. Are you reading Red Hood? I did read the recent issue just for an interview. 
But I'm not officially reading Red Hood. No. Well, the the Are you issue that Red came Hood, out. Brent? I did not the read the new one. Yeah. Well, we're not. You haven't yeah. read it yet because it just came yeah. out. But. Do you think I'll like it? Because I I didn't. I looked at the art of last issue of issue fifty, and I did not even bother. <laughs> so I don't think um, you'll like. I was going to try it's also this a filler one. arc. You don't it's think I like filler arc? No. Okay. Okay. Then probably not. <laughs> Yeah, not, not nothing against the book, obviously. It's just that if you haven't been reading Red Hood, which we both haven't, uh, I don't know no. what two arc issue that is can have a lot that happens be before Future State is going to be the best jumping on point. Oh, no. Brant's internet's going slow again. So who's going to win an Eisner Award this year? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what ends up happening with that. All right, Brand, I see you moving. He's kind of moving. Maybe he doesn't hear me. Yeah. it's No, it's going in and out for me. Do you think your internet's back or no? It's, oh, it's back in currently. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So... Do you think we should run down our uh, top five instead of doing big books this week and just get to some cues and then wrap up the show? Or do you want to still try doing the big Probably. Books? No, we can, we can, well, let's see. Let me look at them. Uh, No, I think we can just run down our top five. I'm sorry. Right. My my internet apparently just got spotty all of a sudden. It's uh, cool. Yeah. And again, sorry to everyone else. We're trying our hardest. <laughs> um, we're, we're trying to run a show uh, our hardest as we can. Um, but yeah, we're going to do the top five. And if you guys want to just come up with some questions, that'll probably be easier for this week. Uh, so just give us your questions. We'll give our... our top five and if there's any books we have extended conversation about we'll we'll do that so number four for for me was black magic issue 16 we do not know when this book will come back it's they say summer of next year i don't know if that's gonna happen but it was good i enjoyed it i know not a lot of people read it but it, i i thought there was some good um plot progression in this issue and some of the drama is definitely riling up. So that's my short description of Black Magic. But I like it. Brant, what was your number four? My number four is Amazing Spider-Man, issue 53. Um, it, it was a better issue, I, I think, this issue. Even though it was completely predictable. And, you know, the, the reveal just... I, I love the way that um, Spencer kind of played with us with that. Like, you knew this was coming. You knew it. <laughs> He said that to Peter, that, you know, you knew it was me. Come on. Um, so, yeah, I, I that was a little tongue-in-cheek, and I appreciated it. Uh, I still don't like that it's Harry, but, you know. And that he looks so much like Norman. I know that in all yeah, I had to, a lot like Norman, but. <laughs> yeah, I had to go back and, like, look at that, like, three times. Like, wait a minute. Is it Harry or is it Norman? It's like, no, it's got to be Harry. So. Yeah, I uh, I didn't love this issue. I didn't think much happened in it. I'm still not quite loving the direction this book is going. Yeah, and even like Bagley's artwork, I don't think was as uh, strong as it usually is. But I agree. Yeah, what can you do? That's that's amazing, Spider Man. So that was our number fours. Uh, number three for me is Still Water, hmm. which we already talked about. Yeah. My number three was uh, Nightwing 76. Uh, it, it was a fun issue where, I mean, well, not, I don't know that fun is the right word since he was battling the guy that shot him in the head. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a redemption, though. You know, it's Nightwing, uh, you know, gets a little payback. And uh, in, in part of the story, he, he kind of um, reaffirms that he's not like Batman, but then by the end of the story, the way he handles his relationship with B, he realizes he is very much like Batman in the way that he did that, and he knows it as he breaks up with her and tells her he just wants to be friends, even though he's still in love with her and remembers everything, um, but he, he wants to protect her, and he realized by KGB kind of taking her hostage that he couldn't do that if he was with her, so 
uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting, uh, interesting examination into who Dick Grayson is now, which is a lot more like Batman than he would like to admit. So that's our number threes. We're going to run down to our number two, which mine was Cable. So we talked about it. Mine was Stillwater. There we go. Uh, so uh, next up is number one. What was your number one, Brant? Teen Titans, which we already talked about. My number one was Dead Day, issue five. Five. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good ending. I liked the how it kind of all wrapped up with uh, Helmet Boy and him sacrificing himself and, and how the mother slash wife felt about him. I thought was really interesting. And I just really liked the thematics of this book and the, the family dynamic a lot. I thought it was just very different from what we've seen in other stories. Hmm. Okay. I, I enjoyed it. Not quite as much as you did, uh, obviously. Um, did not make my top five. But yeah, it, it was a, it was a good story. It was a solid uh, mini series, I guess it was. Uh, I could I could have seen this with a longer arc, and I think I, I was a little disappointed that it ended so abruptly. So yeah, I could understand that. Uh, was there any other? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to say it's interesting that uh, as much as we were anticipating it, that Spider Woman was not neither one of our top five. <sighs> Yeah, I yeah. want to talk about that. I didn't really like this arc because I thought it was going to be yeah. much more about Carol and Jessica. Yeah. And it wasn't. And it was right. like, let's talk about space and this this kind of plot line that's going on with that I haven't been liking, this drug thing and that she's sick. Uh, yeah, I wasn't a fan of this one. Yeah, I was very surprised mm-hmm. by it because I've been liking this book a lot, but didn't really quite like this arc so far. Yeah. Yeah, and then by the end of the issue, it's like it's not about Carol and Jess at all because she goes off on her own. It's like what the? That's not what I was looking forward to, and it's yeah, it was a little disappointing. So, plus after yeah, that I, nice, yeah. beautiful preview, I, uh, not not to take anything away from the the art in the book, but it just you know it, I was wanting that art. <laughs> you know, I knew it wasn't. I didn't expect it to be that art, but. It's just one more thing against it, I guess. Yeah, no, I agree. The artwork wasn't as strong. And even the coloring from the same artist, like this is the same yeah. artist. I thought it was stronger in the previous arc than it was here. And it didn't really feel right. cosmic Uh So I, I was disappointed with Spider-Woman, uh, sadly, mm-hmm. um, which also wasn't even in our, our big book. So we, we didn't miss out on that. I was going to say, was there any other books you want to discuss? Um, X of Swords overall, I thought was a pretty solid run. Um, yeah, still like Cable the most. I think we both agreed on that because that was both in our top mm-hmm. five. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the strongest one. The other two were kind of they were they were solid though. They were still solid. They weren't bad by any stretch. And some some big things happened. Well, Psylocke. Um, well, the other side, Quanin. <laughs> I'm so confused. Both the yeah, Psylocke's are dead. Why not? She's gonna Kill die both. or she's dead. Yeah. which I was like, uh. I didn't like that issue as much, and that was probably my least yeah. favorite. But because I think oh, it was so three, connected yeah. to, because it was so connected to that previous book, I didn't feel connected to what was going on in Exo Swords. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I agree. Um, I think we talked about all the main ones that I want to would have wanted to talk about. Yeah, me too. For so. that, uh, we'll we'll go into key issues again, guys. If you have any questions throw them in the chat and we'll answer them uh, or we'll have a shorter show for the Thanksgiving week. Uh, but yeah. let us know if you got more yeah. stuff to say. And I apologize for my delay. I can tell there's a delay. So I'm, I'm sorry about that, but it's not the um, worst. So hopefully it yeah. doesn't get worse. <laughs> it doesn't get, yeah. you know, uh, bad, right. but yeah, key yeah. issues, so I, go for it. Right. And I apologize if I talk over you, it's not an intentional guy. But um, anyway, uh, Suicide Squad number 11. This is the final issue, right? This is, this yeah. is it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, we get to see how that all wraps up. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what they do with that. And hopefully it gives us some hints to where some of these characters go from there. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I hope we get more of uh, Deadshot's daughter because obviously there was a big moment there. And excited to see where it goes. Sad it's over, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, scumbag number two for you. Stoked. Loved issue one. Brant, don't read it. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited for this one. So yeah. uh, hopefully it lives up. Yeah. 
I, I was getting, I had Red Hood on here, but you talked me out of it, so I'm just going to skip right past yeah, that. Yeah, I think just wait until after Future Ends over. Because I would say if this gotcha. is the new creative team, go for it. Like, this is the new direction. Because it's only right. two issues, do you really want to jump on and then jump off? Like, I think it's just not worth it. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. I, I agree. Uh, just a little plug for Bigs and Tiny, number five. This is from Black Box Comics, and uh, this is the uh, art team that does The Last Ember. So, uh i just going to oh, give nice. them a little plug. Yeah, so uh, check that out. Um, and I, Ramel writes it, I think. Yeah, so. He does, yeah. He does. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We got Power Pack Issue 1. Or Power Pack. Oh, yeah. It's a one-shot, right? No, it's four issues. Oh it's, oh, it's four issues. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm so, so excited for this book. I, I remember, so right before COVID... Was the week you supposed to come out? <laughs> um, so that week, and then obviously it got delayed. So we've been waiting like three or four months for this book. I'm a huge, huge Julie Power fan. So I'm excited to see Julie and her girlfriend. And I, I know they're not going to be a big part, but from what I've seen and with my investigation, uh, they're going to be mentioned and uh, they're going to have like a scene or two at least. I don't think it's going to be in this issue because it's not really centric this issue. They, every issue is going to be a different voice of the power pack. So this okay. issue is going to be Katie um, and then next is Julie, I believe. And then issue three or four is going to be Jack or Alex. Um, but I love the power pack. I, I love this. This is the only reason I like wanted to read Outlaw because I knew Power Pack was going to be in it. I'm a little worried about like de aging the characters because they, yeah. Alex and Julie are not underage. So no. Julie in college, she's has to be about 18, and Alex has to be 20. So I'm confused of how they're even part of this event, but it looks <laughs> like they're de aging them, but it doesn't look like they're changing much of their story. They're just yeah. like doing new 52 Batman thing. They're like, everything happened, but you're younger now. Right. Maybe it's like uh, Julie graduated high school early. So she's she's 17 in college. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it um, doesn't play off of Alex having to be younger as well. But Yeah. I don't know. They're twins now. No. They're twins. Um, <laughs> Alex is just like one minute apart and yeah. it's changing all they, continuity. Something's going to have happened to them with the future foundation out in space or with Alex. Um, yeah. So that's, what's going to happen there. Um, they got DH somehow in space. <laughs> you know what? Travel through. It was the opposite of what happened to John Kent in DC. So if, if Ricky and Julie are together, that's honestly all I care about. And if they're all still <laughs> siblings, like that's yeah. those are only three, th the only two things I really need. Uh, yeah. And don't race uh, Julie's bisexuality. That's it. That's all I need. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, Power Pack. Excited for it. Hopefully, it's glowing reviews. Uh, but I'll yeah. be honest, man. I haven't, I haven't loved the Power Pack. Uh, like the the one shots that have come out in the recent years. Right. So I hope this one's better than those. Like the last Power Pack I really enjoyed was probably the the kid ones that came out like a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, also, I didn't Future even... Foundation wasn't bad. Yeah, I just I the art and Future Foundation kind of brought it down for me. But other than yeah. that. Um, yeah, all the, the, the take a breath, speak right. <laughs> all that we have left <laughs> is uh, the Ten of Swords books X Men number 15, Excalibur number 15, and X of Swords uh, Destruction number one. So excited yeah. to see how it ends, yeah, exactly. The last part, yeah, right, right. So, uh, hopefully, the X Men win, otherwise, the entire Marvel universe is doomed <laughs> so yeah i'm sure and, they're they're gonna be fine yeah it'll be interesting to see how the uh scales rebalance though because obviously Araco is a or however you say that um is ahead so yeah um although it helped they caught up a little bit in yeah um Excellent. the last right. issue yeah yeah so all right we do all got right. some questions here so let's go let's through those uh, upcoming, uh, any opinion, upcoming future state, which books are you looking forward to? So I'm not going to talk about future state just because we've, I feel like we've talked about it before, but we could talk about what we're looking forward to. Um, honestly, I'm just really looking forward to the Batman books and probably immortal wonder woman looks interesting. Yeah. I don't remember which all, all the ones that are coming out now because it's been, you know, we talked about it a it's few a times time. and yeah, 
yeah, I, I, do, I really don't remember. The, the Wonder Woman one, yeah, I agree, is probably the one I'm most anticipating. We do have uh, some Power Pack comments here. Uh, I mean, if you like Power Pack Comic Uno, you should follow Power Pack Nation on Twitter. He is a, also a mass fan of Power Pack, too. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm already following them because <laughs> I follow a lot of like, Power Pack stuff. I know I'm following the Julie Power Twitter account because my girl Julie needs the love. <laughs> uh, we do have another question for BJ. Uh, you have knowledge about comics so much. Will you write a comic if you get a chance? Well... <laughs> DJ, uh, we full both circle. write comics yeah full yes. circle here uh we both write comics we will plug that kickstarter at the end of the show but please go check it out uh go get our comics we do have a lot of comic knowledge and you should like read our books it'd be really cool uh dollar counts man dollar counts yeah. for that. yeah absolutely we also have other questions, which is why I'm not plugging it right this second, because I would like to do that at the end of the show. But if you guys have Kickstarter sure. questions, we're right here. Comic book questions. You've read our books before. You want to know all the spoilers? Access? Access may will answer. Probably not the spoilers, but <laughs> you can still ask. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad, do you see an end of Exa Swords could lead to the beginning of King and Black? Probably. I don't think they're going to be connected. No, I, I don't think they are either. Uh, Kenneth asks, what can DC do to give us a great Supergirl book again? Um, I honestly don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Who, Good who creative wrote, team. I was about to say, who wrote that one that we really liked? Mariko Tamaki. Yeah. Hire Mariko Tamaki to write it. And there you go. Honestly. Or just give yeah. us like a Supergirl being super ongoing series. Right. Yeah, exactly. Something in that vein. Yeah. That's the best Supergirl story I've ever read. It's really good. And I've read most, most all, all Supergirl stories. Uh, what, I don't really understand this question, Tavia. What can DC Comics do to bring Young Justice in any opinion on deceased dead planet? Bring back Young Justice? I don't know. It just got canceled. So I don't think they're going to. Any opinion on yeah. deceased? I dropped neither, it. <laughs> yeah, neither one of us read Deceased, so yeah. no opinion there. Um, Young Justice, I, it's, I just hope that they do something with some of those characters because they're really cool characters, and you know, maybe, maybe Titans grows. Maybe there's a Young Justice League book. Who knows? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. We'll, we'll see what happens in the future with that. Kenneth asks, which creative team do you want to see for Superman? After Bendis leaves, he says Tom Taylor or Mark Wade. Tom Taylor would be cool. I, I definitely would like to see him. Yeah, Tom Taylor would be good. Uh, just somebody that hasn't written him before. I would like to see mm -hmm. fresh voice. I feel like Mark Wade's been in the the big two a little bit too much to give a fresh voice to yeah. uh, Superman. And he's also just done so many like big I mean, DC runs. Yeah, I love Mark Wade, but yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd like great to see writer. Someone new. Right. But he's just been I, he's I been in the off, industry for too long. Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head who I'd want to to write Superman. I'd have to think about that one. Because Superman's Sam Humphreys as, as, would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Sam Humphreys would be good. Um as as simple as the concept of Superman is, it's a hard character to get right. Mm -hmm. so. Just because there's been so many stories, how do you do something different with him without being drastic about it? Yeah, exactly. Black Knight acts. Dark Horse is making Hellboy again. Are you going to jump on? No. I've never liked Hellboy, honestly. I've never even seen the movies. I've seen the movies. Well, not the most recent one, but I saw the, the first two. I, I like the movies. I've never read the comic. So it looks like those are all the questions, guys. So we're going to uh, talk about our Kickstarters and, and start wrapping up the show. We hope you enjoyed this. We promise we're more organized on a regular basis, but <laughs> it, you know it's hard to. We're dealing with Kickstarter stuff. We we got our document up. We got you know um, your questions as we we're trying to answer it. So it's a hard balance when it's just two of us, but we we try because usually like we could find the document stuff and do our stuff while you know someone else is talking. But we're the only ones talking. So <laughs> <laughs> plus my internet keeps going out and that's not helping cat at all. But, no, uh, Brant wants to make my life a living hell. So <laughs> I, I think I honestly think it hasn't been that bad of a show. I think we did pretty good. No, it was a good show. We yeah. we did good. I, it's just 
I feel like I said, um, a lot. So I'm sorry. I'm well, my point. In <laughs> yeah. You, you were balancing all, I mean, you took all the segments, so it's like you were kind of doing the whole show by yourself. I was just kind of here answering questions. <laughs> yeah. We're like, I'm going to sit back and relax. <laughs> but yeah, no, we had, we had, I know I had fun. Uh, for yeah. Show. Yeah. For That's sure. all that matters guys. So if you, I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Well, yeah, we're going to get into our Kickstarter. So I, I don't, I have mine up. I guess I'll go first. Um, okay. As I say, um, again, like Paul, like daughter. It's about a high school girl. Father left her to become a full-time superhero. Everyone in the world loves him except for her. And then she inherits his abilities. We have 14 days left. We're at 240 backers. Every backer counts. If you back this up for a dollar, you get over 20 comic books. That is crazy. If you guys back up this project, let me know you watch from Comic Book Weekly. I will give you the dancer issue one digitally for free. So please back it up. That way you could get that book as well. That's about a dancer slash assassin. When she was little, she witnessed her parents being murdered in front of her. Never dealt with that trauma until now. So here are some of the covers for Like Father, Like Daughter. And we also have a crossover print with me, Brant, and our friend. I got to scroll to it. Me, my, uh, our friend Will, it's all the way down there. Hold on. Okay. Me, Brent, and Will, uh, we have this crossover print that we are going to autograph. Uh, either digitally, we'll autograph it for the digital backers or physically for the physical backers. We will even try numbering the prints for uh, whoever backs these up. So you could back up any project as low as dollar and get this print. Is beautiful. This is the creative team of Last Ember. Uh, I also have another crossover with Michael Oming, uh, who does powers with with uh, Brian Michael Bendis. He also did some Young Justice pages. He's done some DC work. Uh, so he was really nice enough to do a print for me, which was awesome for us, really, because he he also has a campaign. So if you back up After Realm, uh, you could get this print physically. Yeah, and I have a connection to that print too because my wife colored it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, so Lisa actually colored this, which is so good. And Mike compliment, complimented Lisa so much. He really liked the colors. Uh, so I I love this print so much. And I hope you guys could support both all these projects if you can. Uh, but whatever piques your interest, we we really appreciate that. And, you know, we all work really hard to, to get these comics out there. So we hope you could support it. And uh, we, we'll put your names on the bottom of the show if you let us know that you supported it. So let's go to Brant with his with his Kickstarter. Yeah, just pull it up here. And there we go. I've got it on uh, one of the interior pages because I wanted to show off some of the art there. So uh, the last Ember is about a teenage girl who gets imbued with uh, the ability to create and control fire. She learns later on that she is the last fire goddess, last of her kind, and she has to figure out what that means in her world. And in the meantime, there's a serial killer hunting beings like her and he is on his way to her and she's dealing with school bullies family drama and nothing is as it seems and by the end of this arc everything will have changed so um this is a four issue arc and it's a bold new direction it's a great jumping on point uh there was a, a couple of prequel chapters which are also available in this campaign i don't have a cool dollar deal like cat but i do have a lot of cool stuff including some custom coasters that have our symbol uh laser i don't have a coaster so. yeah you don't have a coaster so. <laughs> or a song <laughs> yeah or a song yeah I, I keep forgetting to plug that yeah i've got an official original theme song for the last ember that is also available on the campaign and it's Really cool. It sounds really great. So uh, I think, I don't remember what tier you get that at, but you can hear it in the uh, the project video. It's playing in the background. So uh, that's cool. So let's see. I'm going to scroll back up because my variant cover is up here. There's one variant cover that we have. This is by Francesco Tomaselli of Heavy Metal uh, featuring Tiana, which is uh, Ember's high school nemesis. They do not like each other. And uh Spoiler alert, they get into a big fight in this issue. So uh, big stuff happening there. And, uh, yeah, there's that crossover print that Kat showed on hers. And like I said earlier in the show, we are very close to unlocking two milestones. We're nearly at 75%, and we are nearly at 150 backers. So uh, help us get to those milestones. And there's this beautiful, beautiful cover that I'm still trying to figure out how to do this on the cover. 
<laughs> Still waiting to hear from a printer. Uh, if I can't figure it out, we'll just uh, maybe we'll release both covers. Who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, go check it out. Embercomic.com slash hunted. Any and all support and shares is greatly appreciated. Yeah, please do. It, it, and we understand it's hard times. So if you guys can't afford to, to yeah, get the course. comic, um, you know, sharing also helps. So that that's also also greatly appreciated. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. That's I'm sh I'm sure the plugs we have, uh, Brand. If you have anything else, I, one thing I guess I'll plug is that next Monday or this coming Monday, if you enjoy these Q and A styles, me, Will, and Brant will be doing a Q and A on my channel. Uh, uh, nine o'clock, I believe we're, we're planning on Monday. I think I'm going to try streaming it on my Facebook and uh, my YouTube channel. So go check that out. We're going to just do a Kickstarter Q&A over there. Yeah, and uh, we mentioned Will's Kickstarter. I don't know that we actually said the name oh, of it. Comic Division. Point, so. uh, uh, crossover Division. Cro Sorry, crossover Division, comic. yeah. Yeah. Crossover Division. Um, I actually letter that book as well. I actually letter like Father, Like Daughter too now. Uh, so... I've got connection in all three. So when you're back in those, any one of those three, you're su helping support me as well. So that's cool. Um, yeah. So go check out crossover division, the last ember, like father, like daughter. Uh, I could go on and rattle a whole bunch of others, but there's some cool comics on there. If you're looking for something new, something fresh, go browse through the comics category on Kickstarter. Cause there's so many cool projects over there right now. Yeah, please do. Uh, and we appreciate it, guys. Thank you for watching, Doring. I'm sure what is a busy week for you guys because of Thanksgiving yeah. and all that fun jazz. But hopefully you all enjoyed, and we'll be back next week. Uh, also, hopefully with the trio, uh, it looks like it's going to be. So we're, we're going to have Mike and, and Brant and me for the show. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Power Pack. You definitely want to be there for that. <laughs> all right, guys. See yeah. you later. All right. Take care.